I'm just going to do a very brief exhortation, hopefully just five minutes. <laughs> it's funny because my dad actually hit on it for one brief moment. He brought up David and Goliath, and I thought, oh, shoot, what's he going to go into? You know, and this has happened multiple times that either I'm picking up on what he's studying or he's picking up on what I'm studying. I don't know. I don't know. But um, I know last night I was kind of... Uh, inspired to go over to first Samuel and read chapters 15 through 18 to get the context for the story of David and Goliath. Well, the more I read, this just kept billowing and billowing and just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So I just lopped off the very first part and that's what I'm going to talk about. So um, first Samuel chapter 15. And my topic today, just very briefly again, is going to be throw your ego under the bus. <laughs> throw your ego under the bus. So 1 Samuel 15 begins the story of talking about the Israelite King Saul. And King Saul had been given very specific directions from the prophet Samuel. Well, anyway, he was told that when he went and did this little battle with this country and this people, that him and his men were supposed to destroy everything completely. Well, to make a long story short, they didn't, you know, they did about an 80% job. We have a joke here in our family uh, where our dad says, you know, you're being too perfectionistic. You do 80%. Do 80% put it out, move on, 80%, right? Well, in this particular story, um, God lets the prophet know King Saul did not do 100%. They did like 65 to 80% of what he told him to do, which was to take care of everything completely. Well, God told the prophet Samuel, he said, I regret that I made Saul king, for he has turned away from following me and has not carried out my instructions. Now, mind you, he did at least 80%, but they kept a bunch of the fancy animals, the choice animals. They kept the king alive, right? So there were all these things they kept. So Samuel was so upset and he cried out to the Lord all night. And finally, when Samuel gets up and he goes to look uh, for King Saul to confront him. Well, guess what? King Saul is off on the hill setting up a monument to himself. So it's like, oh dear, okay. And so when he confronted him, King Saul said, look, the troops, okay, let me, let me separate myself from this. The troops kept the choice animals. And you know what? It was for a good reason. It was good for, for a good purpose. It was so that we can offer a sacrifice to the Lord your God, right? So you should be perfectly happy with that. Oh, uh, no. The prophet said, stop. Let me tell you what the Lord said to me last night. You once considered yourself unimportant. You once considered yourself unimportant, right? And this is where we get the point. Throw your ego under the bus because ego can be a very large stumbling block for all of us. It can keep us from doing the exact and perfect will of the Lord. So because we can get to the point where we are afraid to embarrass ourselves in front of others. So I'm always reminded of the time that I started taking dance classes when I was 16 years old. Well, guess what? Most people taking dance classes start when they're, you know, three, four, you know, if they're old, maybe like eight, 11, something like that. Okay. So I started when I was 16 and I was put on a scholarship so I could take as many lessons as I wanted per week. And so all in one week's time, I was taking classes with small children Beginner level classes, you know, lift your arm, 
point your toe, go in the circle. And then I would go in the other room with the teenage girls who had been dancing since they were three years old. And they would literally dance in circles, leaping and jumping around me. And I was just like fumbling around trying not to get run over. <laughs> so it was like a embarrassment on this end, embarrassment on that end. And, but you know, I was so excited. I had been wanting to dance for so many years that I just pushed through, pushed through, pushed through. But you know how many people quit? You know how many people I saw come for a semester and drop out a class and drop out you know why because when you come and you're a beginner it's really awkward wearing that leotard you feel very self-conscious okay there's windows people are looking okay you don't normally just dance around in a bathing suit right that's not normal um you feel very awkward you haven't done these moves before right you have to be willing to humble yourself and feel humiliated in order to grow so one time i preached a message and i felt so bad about it that as soon as i came down off the stage i immediately started crying and luckily most of the people were already heading out of the, <laughs> of the uh sanctuary by that time but there were a few people who you know saw what was happening or whatever well guess what i still kept showing up for work <laughs> right because you have to be willing to have the embarrassing situation so that you can grow so we have to decide when we're um, working for God you have to sometimes weigh here's my ego my ego says I don't want to be judged I don't want to step onto the live stream I don't want to put my face my chubby face <laughs> on the camera for people to make fun of right but then you have to say well what's more important than my ego is there something more important than that well if you're working for god then then sharing those words like my dad said if the love's not coming into you and through you then what, what are you even saved okay so i think of the movie i don't know if y'all remember this slub slum dog millionaire yeah. <clears throat> it's like a little indian boy and i don't know if they were two brothers or cousins or what i can't remember all the details but one of them kind of went a bad way and one of them was had a a good heart or a righteous person and so there was some sort of opportunity i guess where a famous person had come to visit and it was just a once in a lifetime opportunity to see this famous person that this um, young boy had really looked up to a celebrity and so he went into the um, outhouse <laughs> outside and I think the other boy like locked him in or something so he was stuck he couldn't get out and the the famous person was walking through you know I envision like Jesus <laughs> walking through the city and everybody's following around him to try to touch his garment trying to get healed and and trying to call out to him and get his attention well, in this situation, the boy is stuck in the outhouse. They've locked him in the wooden, <laughs> the wooden box, and all the kids are thronging to the famous person, trying to get an autograph, trying to shake their hand, trying to say hello. Well, the boy had his little picture of the this person that he really admired, and so he looks down. It was like the wooden box, and then underneath it. Uh, you know was open and then there was a hole so he looks down at the hole and he realizes the only way that i'll be able to get out of here is if i jump down into the hole that's full of the nasty filthy smelly unsanitized matter the only way i'll be able to accomplish that dream meet that goal is if i submerge myself and this humility, embarrassment, stinkiness, and climb up and go. So he looks at the picture thinking about how, how important this is to him and how desperately he wants it. And he looks down at the hole 
And he makes that decision that you and I have to make all the time. Do I choose my comfort and my ego and how I feel and how I smell or whatever? Or do I embrace this thing that I value? I say I value. Okay? And then he closes his eyes, takes a deep breath, jumps down, climbs out. And then it turns out because he's covered in this, he makes a shot right through the group because everyone's trying to get away from him because he's just covered from head to toe and this filthy matter. And he, everybody else is being held back, but he makes it through because nobody wants to touch him. And he makes it all the way to the famous person. He gets the autograph and he's punching the sky. Oh my God, it's so great. And the little boy who I think was locked him in the outhouse, he was sitting there looking so disappointed, like, not only did his sabotaging of the righteous kid with the pure heart, not only did he not succeed in stopping him from having his moment, but he himself did not succeed. So I think of the verse, uh, we know it, Psalm 23, very famous, verse 5, it says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Okay? And then we switch over to Psalm 37. And it says, do not fret because of evildoers. Okay? So the boy was, you know, being wrong who locked him in there. It says, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Um, and then we skip down to verse um 35 and it says i have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a native green tree yet he passed away and behold he was no more indeed i sought him but he could not be found wow. right so i would just encourage you today to um throw your ego under the bus and don't let any amount of embarrassment or self-consciousness or I have this excuse and you know I could think of a hundred excuses of why I should not have gotten up here this morning <laughs> you know including I'm very tired at the moment um, I can think of a lot of excuses but at some point you have to ask yourself and say what do I value more the judgments of others or not so I would say to you today don't abandon yourself don't abandon that conviction, that desire, that dream, those visions that God has placed in your mind about your destiny, what you're supposed to be doing, where you're supposed to be going, what classes you're supposed to be taking, who you're supposed to be with, uh, what videos you're supposed to be making, etc. Don't abandon those convictions that God has placed within you. Instead, abandon other people's judgments. Abandon other people's judgments. So... Do not miss your blessing. Do not miss your calling. Don't miss your mission. Don't miss your instructions. Um, there's a whole lot more to this story. But again, like I said, I just lopped off the front part because it just got so big and uh, so wild. But I will say, embrace the matter. Pretty much anything in life worth doing, there's a big pile of matter. A big tub of matter is sitting right in front of it right so if you want to get a master's degree there's the matter you know you want to go become a doctor guess what you're gonna go through the matter you're gonna swim through the matter okay i had a friend um who got his phd from southeastern baptist theological seminary here in wake forest and he described going through school as rings of fire right <laughs> This is all about how many rings of fire am I willing to jump through? At what point do I say, that's it. 
I don't need to jump through any more rings of fire. I'm good. I'm done. Right? So it's really just, you'll discover <laughs> it's not really about who's smart and who's intelligent. It's about who is persistent, who just keeps showing up, who just keeps going. And that's good as long as, you know, you know, you're on the right track. God's placed that desire in your heart. That's what you've seen. You know, this is what's supposed to happen. So I encourage you today to tap into that. I think all of us on some level know what we're supposed to be doing. I think all of us on some level have had some sort of vision, dream, fantasy, imagination about what it is we could be doing or should be doing. So I would encourage you, instead of letting those little excuses that pop up in your mind, well, this is embarrassing, this is awkward, I haven't done it, there's a reason, I'm tired, you know, whatever it is, you got to hold your nose, close your eyes, and jump in. And that's the only way. That's the only way. So... I don't know if that's an encouraging um, <laughs> exhortation for you today. Throw your ego under the bus and embrace the matter. Wow. Maybe we'll continue this yeah, or not. <laughs>